Welcome to 602 Row Show. This is our uh, Thorny Propositions Come to Jesus episode. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you remember, we uh, we threw some prop bets out. Um, yeah. For the uninitiated, prop bets are kind of like if statements uh, for the season. Uh, and we kind of adapted them over to Fantasy Bachelor. Uh, so the stakes were... Shots of Malort. I have my uh, 2021 barrel aged limited edition. You know, I'm just happy I found Malort period here in, in Missouri because I had to go to three different liquor stores to get one finally, and this was the last one in the store. So, uh, Malort, who is not a sponsor, but if they would like to be, um, at King of Lakemore on Instagram, we can uh, talk some shop. I think after this episode, they either will want to be or will not want ever me to talk about Malort again. Their social media team is pretty cool. They send little merch packs and stuff. We've uh, we've worked with them a little bit before. So uh, for the uh, those of you who are not from Chicago, uh, Malort has started spreading all over the country now. Uh, I don't know who they got to do their, Chicago their district. Chicago has started spreading all, all over the country. Fair. Uh, Malort is, um, I think technically it is a wormwood liqueur. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's so good. Uh, there are spots all over town that use it, uh, in, in specialty drinks, uh, and you can use it in martinis and, uh, you know, it's really just, uh. It's really indicative of Chicago as a city. Uh. <laughs> it's, supposed to, it's supposed to, it was, I heard from someone, and this might be totally false, but I've, I've heard that if you say it with confidence, then it's true. Um, but it's supposed to, it's a type of liqueur that helps with digestion. And so you're not supposed to drink it in large quantities because it's supposed to help your belly digest things. All right. So having said that, uh, we <laughs> both wagered a shot of Malort on... Three different prop bets each. Uh, now, I believe that's where we ended it, but there might have been another shot in play for the overall winner. Is that correct? I think technically we had talked about doing um, an entire Bachelor episode. That's right. That's with shots right. Of using more. And I have to tell you, I think that I would actually die. I think that my liver would, like, I would be throwing up within. The first hour of well, the episode. I mean, let's get to the prop bets uh, and see how many shots each of us has. And, uh, okay. and we'll kind of go from there. Totally. Uh, unfortunately, I believe I'm up first. Yeah, I think so. So uh, my props were Gabby mm -hmm. over 10 swears. Uh, we made mm -hmm. that number 10 and a half. Uh, just to, to stick with the, the prop mm -hmm. theme here. Uh, I had two contestants with five or more kisses in a single episode between episode three and episode five. Mm -hmm. I also had Genevieve to be top ten in average scoring by the end of week six. Yeah. So that's kind of where we went with these. They're, some are season long, some are very specific to the time period. Uh, the idea was to find something that kind of backed the narrative that we were telling uh, as part of the show uh, and go in that direction. Um so, Gabby over ten and a half swears cashed. Uh, it Almost took... did it. You were real close. So, you were real close to having to do a shot for that. But one. what I had said while we were talking about it um, mm -hmm. was that it was going to come down to the very end and it was going to yeah. be the blow up that we saw. Um, mm -hmm. But she was sitting on five swears for a very long time. I was very worried about this. <laughs> And I can honestly say that the most excited I was watching all season was Gabby telling off Clayton. And I'm, I'm counting them down, and I'm standing up, and I'm screaming, and I'm celebrating. Um, so so I, I really like doing the props because it gave me something else to, to kind of key in on here. Uh, so that's a win there. Uh, two girls with five or more kisses in a single episode. Check. Uh, and the reason for that was really because they broke how the episodes are working. Yep. So. Yeah, they did. 
Uh, my third prop bet is uh, Genevieve, okay. who we know I had my struggles with uh, from a love-hate standpoint. <laughs> uh, I had Genevieve to be top 10 in average scoring by the end of week six. Mm-hmm. Uh, she did. <laughs> she did. She squeaked it. She squeaked it. Uh, 17.8 points was good for 10th place at the end of week six. I believe it was only a quarter point better than 11th place. Yeah. Um, yeah, like it, was, it was tight. Yeah, like it. I think she like talked shit about somebody after the rose ceremony, and like that was the points. Like the rose wasn't enough to get there, uh, but <laughs> got there. So three for three. No malort for me. <laughs> the worst I can do is tie for first. Yeah, that's true. So well. Let's- how I did. Move into yours here. What you got? <laughs> well, you're after my things. I have them up. So I think the first one was that Teddy's virginity would be talked about. That, that's your third one. So so oh. uh, I'll give them to you here. Uh, Gabby would be the first to say, I'm falling in love, I love, or I'm in love. Uh, okay. Your second yeah. one was that. Well, let's take them one by one because my memory is not that strong. Fair enough. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, Gabby, it turned out was not the first one to say it. And actually halfway through the season, she, I think said something along the lines of like, it's really hard for me to say, I love you. I've only said like once before or something like that, where I was just like, fuck. <laughs> I, th- I think we made these yeah. after week two. Yeah, we did. <laughs> so early. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I think Rachel... I believe that's accurate. I think it was on top of the, it, the top of the church, yeah. right? I, th- I think, yeah, I think it was Rachel who said it first. So uh, that's a that's a loss. Um, ready? Are you gonna get the sound? Oh, that's uh, a that's a fresh bottle, team. Yeah, it is. It is. I saved opening it for you guys because you know I really wanted that crack. Uh, when I have a special shot glass from uh, South Africa. Doesn't fit at all, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it was the, it was the smallest one that I. Had. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> uh, oh, I can already smell this like wafting. It uh, it smells of of elderberries. Is that what we're calling no. it? Okay, so to Rachel being the first one to say that she was falling in love with our dear Mister Clayton. The trick is not to, like, really breathe afterwards. <laughs> there it is. There it is. All right. So, uh, by the end of episode five, Clayton will have been shown kissing everyone left. Yeah. That also didn't happen. <laughs> um, because I think there was only one girl, right? I think it was just Mara that he hadn't been shown kissing. Like, it was one girl that I missed. I believe it was Mara. I think it was Mara. Mara didn't fucking kiss him on camera. Because he picked up Marlena, like, really late. Mm-hmm. Yep, and Sierra had gotten to at home, and so I think I just needed Mara. And she had an entire fucking episode to kiss him. And she decided to uh, have yeah. a fit instead. <laughs> Alright, so that's yeah. two losses. For the team here, this is a 70-proof uh, bottle of alcohol. And it tastes like a 70-proof <laughs> bottle of alcohol. Okay. So, Tamara, um, not making out with Clayton in public. <laughs> On camera. <laughs> For public. For public consumption. I can't imagine he didn't make out with every single person. Oh, yeah. You kind of owe it to yourself, you know? You gotta taste all the different lips. All right. Uh, Teddy's virginity will be mentioned three or more times. Uh, This is after she brings it up night one. So uh, what do you have for uh, for the count here? 
Um, so Teddy didn't really get a full date. Um, and so I really got fucked on that one. Um, and now we get to officially mark this as like mature audiences only. You're welcome. <laughs> um, I was like breathing through the Malor aftertaste right now. Um, so on their one-on-one -on -one day, Teddy mentioned her virginity once. Or brought it up once as one conversation. Clayton responded really poorly to it. Um, but it was one conversation. She was not shown talking to other girls about it. Was not shown in the confessional talking about it. It was just that one conversation. However, it did get brought back up at the Women Tell All. And so... They replayed the conversation and they had a whole new conversation about it with both Jesse and Clayton. So the question is, does that count as three separate times or because, um, cause, cause technically she talked about it with Jesse and she talked about it with Clayton at the, at the women's hall. So I think that's three. So I will say that somewhere along the line here, we have lost our audio sync. <laughs> Perfect. However, uh, I'm willing to give you this one okay. for the shot. Yeah. However, it's still a loss. So if we, if we do any accounting down the road for future prop bets, you will be 0-3, but you don't have to do the Malort shot for the third loss. Oh. Is that an acceptable settlement? No, if I take the Moller shot right now for it, then if you take the then... if you take the Moller shot, it's a loss. I just I'm trying to head off the like. Well, that one that I got right, like like it will be scored as a loss, but I will let you out of the Moller shot. Why Why would it be scored scored as a loss? Because you did get to three. I did. Yeah. <laughs> Drop in the comments below. Tell me if I got it. Um, I will, you know, I am not one to back out of a bet. Um, so I will take this shot of Malort for Teddy's virginity just to be safe. But I'm not saying I agree with it. If we get, if we get traffic in the comments saying that you're right, mm -hmm. I will do a shot of Malort for making you pay this one. And maybe, like, for future prop bets, this can be counted as a tie one. So I have, like, two losses, one tie, zero win. I think we can we can probably find a, a solution here. Right. Um, you know, my friend Mike really loves Muller and just, like, casually sips it. Yeah, there's weird people who do that. Uh, I'm going to join you on this uh, one. Okay, perfect. To Teddy's virginity. We've mentioned it more here than the show ever did. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> no. All right. Well, we'll get back to you on the proper scoring of this one. But uh, uh, join the Rose League. Hashtag 602 Rose Show is the league name. Uh, if you join now, it'll roll over for Double Bachelorette season here. Uh, so make sure you get on that. Uh, Fantasizer season long stuff will come out way closer to July. And uh, we will be in touch, guys. But uh, drop in the comments what you think uh, what you think the real scoring of that last prop should be. And uh, we'll catch you for Bachelorette. And we will also, we will keep in contact about what I have to do for losing this prop that round. Because there are no more actual episodes to drink the Lord to right now. It feels like a BIP thing. We'll figure it out, team. Uh, like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you for Bachelorette.